morning everybody uh, I got a couple things to show off this week so I'm just gonna jump right into it um, one of the things that I have been using uh, to kind of help me along with the uh, the programming and debugging and all that stuff of it is um, kind of like a, a dump screen uh, for the controllers which has all the information that you know uh, the controller objects have in them um, and I'm showing that off here from my DualShock 4. And it's something I'll probably keep in the program because it could be helpful to people that are trying to debug their own issues or look at uh, issues with mapping or something like that. Um, but you see we got uh, some of the higher level uh, controller informations in here. Um, even have access to the HID device uh, object where we can get information on that. Uh, device state which is probably important to a lot of people um, I also have the six axis gyro working in this now uh, you see that coming through uh, and that's fully mappable and everything now so um, it's something that was really just meant for me kind of like the CPU memory monitor but uh, I might as well keep it in for you guys to use I don't know if it's hel helpful at all but might as well um, something else I got to work is the trackpad as a mouse, and that's working. That's working pretty smooth, so uh, that's some progress there. Um, I've also got this, uh, so it's saving the configuration now between runs, meaning if I load up a uh, profile and I quit out of the application, it'll load the profile next time it sees that controller again, so... Um, that was an easy thing to do. It's just something I hadn't done yet. It was on my to-do list. Obviously important. Um, along with all that, been adding uh, support for a lot of other controllers. Um, pretty much everything I have here that I could get my hands on. Um, one of the things that I just recently uh, added support back again was the Space Navigator, which is a 3D mouse. Let's see, I think I have that. Yeah, even though it says space nav to mouse, I think I have that profile going into a 360 controller, which is why that popped up. Let's take a look there. Yeah, it's going into, okay, so. Uh, I'm gonna bring up my X input test and kind of show that off a little bit. I got my pan on the right stick and my tilt on the left stick. Um, I'll, also, I'll go ahead and uh, swap this out for some mouse control because that's more likely what it, what it would be used for. Um, so let's see, this is the gyro. And I also have uh, all the other clicks in here now, one through five. So now when I use the uh, Space Navigator, I can control my mouse. So, and that's all going through the I can actually demo it by pulling up the controller details. That's going through the um, the accelerometer and gyro channels. So you see me futzing with it there. You see it coming in, and those seem to line up pretty pretty well because you know the accelerometer has three axes, the gyro had three axes, so it was, it was a perfect fit. So um, didn't have to change much to get that to work you know, in there directly. Um, it shares a lot of the same properties as other controllers, so uh, it was easy enough. Um, let's see, macros. Uh, I've got the back-end code for the triggers working. Um, I just need to work on the UI. I have two little cheat uh, buttons in here right now. 
Um, and what are, eventually there'll be an option to um, you know select what controller you want to have the trigger generate from, select the channel you want it to generate from. Um, and now instead of it just being true or false, you can select a uh, a test value that you want to test it against and a uh, like a, an operator like less than greater than equal to all that stuff um, you'll be able to do all that now as triggers and I'll demonstrate that by going back to my DualShock 4 here and like I said I cheated and put these in I don't have the UI to actually you know select much stuff yet these were just my test scenarios um, and the UI of this is op obviously very primitive still. Uh, so I put in a face button one test, and that just tests whether or not you know face face button one is pressed on the uh, controller. Um, so that's basic enough. Uh, the other the old macro uh, program could do that in the old input mapper, um, but what this really is great for is. This is a left stick X is greater than 0.4. I can put something like that in there. And now that'll trigger as soon as X is over 0.4 on the left stick. So, and, uh, you know, having, being able to select, select you know, uh, whether or not I want it to be greater than or less than or not equal to or equal to. And then being able to select 0.4 or whatever variable I want in there. Um, should allow people to build some pretty detailed macros. Um, and I'm even going to expose uh, the direct controller um, properties such as the battery state, uh, the rumble, all that stuff. I'm going to expose all of that open to the macros as well so people can write all kinds of stuff. Um, so that'll be interesting. Um, like I said, the, the trigger code, the back end, is working great and that was the biggest part now it's just time for me to write some UI uh, that you know gives people access to that code and yeah with the tr with the macros coming together now um, I think I think we're right online for a release this month um, so that'll be great really try to get this out before Christmas um, so that'll do it guys uh, I'm gonna reset here and I'm gonna stream some Mass Effect 2 because I finished Mass Effect 1 last week so uh, be sure to check back and I'll be doing that on YouTube and Beam and Twitch and Ustream and all them guys so have a good one